due to external obsolescence. It's not the house. It's something external. Yes, sir. So I would say like highways and like prisons. Would that be considered those? Yes. The house has a problem. It backs up to the airport. You could put gold plating everywhere. It's still the house that backs up to the airport or the highway or it's the house next to the prison. Something beyond the owner's control that is causing the problem that would that and typically external obsolescence is what is always considered incurable. They are never going to move the prison. They are never going to close the airport. So external obsolescence is almost always deemed incurable. It is a situation, if you think back to when we talk about reverse condemnation, you get the benefits, but you get to suffer the penalty with no benefits, like the highway builds right up and you're now, that's an external obsolescence. Your house has lost value for that. Now, one thing I forgot, I want to make sure I mention it. In the cost approach, in your book, I want you to write homes with no history. Remember, in the sales comparison approach, I told you to write homes with a history that we can check. The cost approach, back to what Christina had mentioned, is used for homes with no history or new build. Homes with no history or limited history. They are not that so you would use this method, Christina, on properties where, like such as your parents, where the principle of substitution doesn't work. I can't find a 4,000 square foot house in the country out there within five miles. So I'm going to have to use a second method. That's what this method's designed for. Now, the third method is described as the income method. In your books, write investment property. Investment property. You would use this method to determine value if it was, say, an investment piece of parcel because the value is determined based upon the income that it generates. Now, the next thing we have to talk about is this accounting formula that I want to go over before we get into the in, uh, income so that we can understand what's going on. This is a general concept of accounting that we will need to understand to determine these values. And once again, this is why I said that these guys are often seen as the smartest group because they have to understand some of this. This is a general concept that we will use in this chapter and actually in the next chapter. So the first thing is, I wanna talk about this thing called gross operating income. You will hear it called the GOI. The gross means total operating income. This is where all different kinds of income could come from this. So think of all your income properties and think of the different types of income that would come from this. Now, remember I told you, this is not just residential appraisal. So your gross operating income may include things like rent. That's the most common one that everybody thinks about. But there are other sources of income. You may have garage rentals. You may have late fees. You may have a Coke machine that you have on your front porch that generates income. 
anything that would generate income would go in here. And we're not just talking about a single family rental. We could be talking about a hundred unit apartment complex. They rent out the clubhouse. There are pool passes. Maybe someone's got a designated parking spot that they pay extra for. Maybe they've got a garage that they pay extra for. There are some apartment complexes. You rent the apartment and for another $20, you get the one with a roof over it. And for another $40, you actually get a garage. So there are all kinds of income that can come about in this gross operating income. From that, we would subtract all of our expenses involved in that rental property. Payroll, marketing, real estate taxes, legal, advertising, all of those would be expenses. You would subtract your expenses from your gross operating income and you get this thing called NOI, net operating income. If you have a J-O-B, which you know what the J-O-B stands for, right? Just over broke. Your J-O-B paycheck looks exactly the same thing. You've got your gross income. Oh, I've got my hourly pay. And then I got time and a half for a uh, vacation and I got triple time for a holiday. And from that gross pay, they are going to subtract all of your expenses. Oh, I got social security income. I've got health insurance. I put money away for a savings plan and you will get your net pay, your net income. From that, you would subtract this really magical, cool word called debt service. Debt service, which most of us more commonly would call a mortgage payment. Now, the key thing to understand here, a mortgage is not an expense. The mortgage payment or the debt service does not get calculated in up here. It is not considered an expense. You opt, you option, you chose to have a mortgage. So from your net income, you would make your debt service payment and the money you have left in your pocket is called cash flow. This accounting principle, like I said, works just like your J-O-B. You get your gross pay, you subtract your expenses, you've got your take home pay, which is net. You go home to your spouse, you pay your house payment, and the money that's left is your cash flow in your pocket. All right. Now, sometimes you hear them talk about this thing called an effective gross income. Now you got to get really technical. The effective gross income basically is your gross operating income minus some credit loss. Credit loss would be vacancy or people that don't pay. And you will hear investors talk about this. What's your vacancy or what's your effective rent? Well, my, I've got 100% of the year, 100% rental of the units rented. Let me say that again so I can say it straight. I've got 100% of my units rented. Somebody goes, oh, so you're making, oh no, five of them aren't paying and I'm getting ready to evict them. So you have a basically 100% occupancy, but the effective occupancy may only be 80% because you've got credit loss in there. Yes? Okay, 
We're going to keep moving. Effect, so gross operating income minus expenses equals the net operating income. Very important you know that because the third method that we're going to talk about is the income method, which deals with the uh, value based upon the income that it uses. All right. The first method I want to talk about is this method called a cap rate. A cap, which is short for the word capitalization, is a return on your investment. If you had $100,000 and you walked into a bank today and said, hey, I want to deposit this $100,000, how much is the savings earning? And they say, oh, our savings account earns 1%. That 1% is called a cap rate. It is the ratio of the money earned to the value of the property, all right? So the cap rate is the NOI divided by the value. And in this example, I'm telling you the cap rate is 8%. So if you had $100,000 and you were getting 8%, you would earn or your net income would be eight grand. Now there is a algebraic question here. So let's do this. Erase this a little bit, go back. So cap rate equals the NOI over the value. There are three equations that can be derived from this, and you can expect a question of one of those three in nature. Does everybody see that I can algebraically move this stuff around and say that the value is equal to the NOI over the cap rate? And the cap rate times the value equals the NOI. These are the same three equations, only written in a different form. Here we're looking for the cap rate. Here we're looking for the value. Here we're looking for the NOI. Does everybody see those algebraically? Know how to move them around? Yes, ma'am. Could ma you put the paper again uh, so I could see the third one? What's it says? Is it cap, cap rate times the value? Okay. So what you have is the cap rate equals the NOI over the value. You also can flip those here. The value equals the NOI over the cap rate. And the third one would be the cap rate times the value equals the NOI. And if you don't know how to do this algebraically, I had a guy show me this, how he remembered it. And if you want to remember it this way, here's an easy way, watch this. Four is 12 divided by three. You can flip the three and four. Three is 12 divided by four. And then obviously the third equation is three times four equals 12. So you see the same analogy in the cap rate and the NOI as you do here. So he said, oh, I always remember that to help me remember these three. 